Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. You know, I was recording a podcast episode earlier today and got interrupted by a phone call because I record a lot of the episodes on my phone. But when a phone call comes through, it shuts off the recording. And I went, oh, I'm going to finish that one later, and I just will. But there's something else that's coming through me right now, and this is why I got interrupted, and this is what you need to hear today. So you know the movie Back to the Future? Remember that movie Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox? If you didn't, oh my God, you got to go see like at least watch the first one. But whole, like that was just such a huge movie. And if you remember it, Michael J. Fox's character, Marty McFly, goes back in time. Okay. And if you recall some of the pieces of the movie, one of the pieces... So Christopher Lloyd, who was Jim from Taxi, if any of you is my age, if any of you are my age, you understand who that was. Um, Jim Ignatowski, I think that was his name. Holy shit, just pulled that one out of I don't know where. Random facts that you know. Um, and so he plays the mad scientist, Christopher Lloyd, and basically tells him that when he goes back in time, that he can't, there's certain things that he can't do. Otherwise, it's going to change the, tra- the trajectory of his life, right? If something was to happen, his parents don't meet or something, then he won't exist because he will never have been born. And so I want you to think of your life in that way. And here's what I mean by that. We have this culture. Let's call it culture in North America that we can make shit happen and I'm just going to do it, right? Like Nike, just do it. I'm going to push. I'm going to focus and fixate and obsess until I get that thing. And there's a lot of people, could be yourself included, normal folks like you and I, athletes, musicians that have gotten to places by, you know, all of their energy goes into that bucket, right? And they really, they create it. Now, there's a difference though. Creation versus pushing. Allowing versus forcing. Making shit happen, clearly knowing what I want, and then I'm going to let go. But when we begin to get into the mode of trying to control and fix, we have a lot of our wounds that happen to us as kids, which by the way, we all have. It's all part of our journey here in this earth school to move through it and to heal through it and to get the gifts from it so you can become who you really are meant to be. And we have all of this stuff. Think of it like, it's like we're wearing all these like, you know what people will do? Like they'll put on a bunch of different like clothes. Imagine if you're just like, oh, I'm going to put on, so you're putting on your underwear and your bra, you got socks on, you're putting on jeans and then you got a t-shirt on and then you put a pair of shorts on top of the jeans and then over the top you put like a jacket and then you got another jacket, another jacket, you got a bunch of, you got a beanie, you got another hat, you got this and you just have loaded up clothes on you to the point that you can't even maybe like feel your body. Like, you know, when if, you've, if you're a mom, the kids are really little and they're so cute if you live in a place that has snow, they're in the big snowsuit. They're almost just like a little star, like their little legs out, their arms out. They're just kind of in that, right? They can't really move. And they're so little, they're not walking yet, right? They're just still infants at that time. With all of our stories and our stuff and our experiences and our traumas and our thoughts and our beliefs and uh, all this shit, we get in the way of life unfolding for us. Now let's, 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 let's put some, some practical spin on this because I have the, the feeling that this could go to the place of like you shutting down because you're like, oh, fuck, here we go. Karen's all woo-woo. Why don't you go back to episode 200, Karen? You were different then. Yeah, I sure was. Yep. Five years in to, wait, sorry, four years in. Five years podcasting. My first podcast, Mom at 41. Mom at 41 I had a little bit over a year and then... What morphed into this podcast here? Woman wanting more? Yes. 
Yes, I was. I was very much a get shit done, stop your complaining, just do the fucking work, like just come in and ba 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 ba. And you know what? Honestly, that serves at some level for all of us. But there becomes this point in life when I'm here, 50, embarking on what I'm going to call the second chapter of my life. So I'm going to live to be 100, y'all, just so you know. Actually, I'm gonna, maybe I'm more like 120. <laughs> that it's very clear to me that that way of being actually interferes and doesn't make shit happen. And you get to a point where that way of being doesn't even produce the results you want anymore. And so what do we often do? We go, well, I'll just do more of it. Let me do more of the shit that's not even working anymore. I'll just keep doing more of it. Right? It seems so ridiculous. It's like I watch, you know, our six-year-old son, Kai. He's got an iPad. It's a real older one. And he literally, you know, just rages on that thing. I mean, like, I'm not kidding you. There's like dance in it. The screen's cracked. It glitched. Kind of came back to life. And he thinks if he sits there and he pounds on it enough, that that will somehow make it stop glitching, which, by the way, the pounding on it, breaking the screen, and or it's just, you know, sometimes games just glitch. He's playing or like whatever. The Wi-Fi is a little sketchy. And he keeps doing more of the same. We're just like, dude, it's not going to fix it. Can mommy help me? No, I'm just going to, I hate this. I'm like, all right, just let him well on the iPad. So he doesn't get himself hurt, break the glass, cut his hand. So there will be a point in your life, and it could be right now that this is really speaking to you. We're like, oh yeah, the same way of how I used to like do things and show up. It's not even actually getting me what I want. And I just keep doing, well, I'm not focused enough, or I need to commit more. There's got to be a new technique and a new tool, or like, I just need to work harder and faster and longer, and uh, I'm going to sleep less, and I'm going to... And it just spins you around and around, and then you don't get results, and then you beat yourself up, and there's a self-loathing and this feeling of, like, hopelessness, and, like, and then you just hate yourself some more, and then you're just, you know, you feel me? I'm going to use a phrase I heard... um, Michael Bernard Beckwith, I think he just goes by Michael Beckwith now, who's one of the teachers in The Secret, and he's, he's the pastor of the Agape um, Spiritual Center slash church in, uh, I think it's in Southern California. And, uh, and he goes, I love when I've heard him speak, is like, are you putting up what I'm putting down? No, sorry, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Are you in that space where you're just like, fuck. Yeah. So here's the secret I want to share with you, okay? It's real. It's not just something that seems cool. Like, it is real. So just like in Back to the Future, when it was really important that Marty didn't get in the way because it was like, he, was, he would interfere with his future and, and maybe not be born. That there are so many ways that we show up in our life that interferes. So it is not allowing us to be who we are designed to be. Which is a beautiful, gorgeous, powerful, calm, centered, grounded, loving, compassionate, empathetic, spiritual, connected woman. In her divine feminine. Now, you may be listening to this and go, oh my God, I am picking up what you're putting down, Karen. And then here we go, the beating yourself up. Put the hammers down, sister. Mm-mm, we're not going to do that. Because he's, he's the other piece you need, to, you need to know. Every single thing in your life serves at some level. I mean, everything. Oh, but Karen, the awful thing that happened to me? Yep. The horrible thing when I was a child? Yeah, actually, yes. And I know it doesn't feel good to hear that. And I'm not trying to 
take away pain or suffering that you were put through or that happened to you or that's going to you right now. It's still real. And every single piece of our life serves. The times where you go, oh, I fucked that up. Yeah, that served. There was something in that experience for you. It doesn't take you off your path. Do you see? It's just part of your path. There is no wrong decisions. There's just, there's lessons. There's incredible gifts. I've experienced this in my life. I've seen clients experience this over and over and over and over and over and over and over over again. And the moment that we finally choose to just let go, the moment that we choose to go, okay, got it, universe, God, source, whatever, me, I surrender. I'm tired. Sometimes it takes that. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. This is not working. And sometimes you're going to be, it's, it'll be like, I give up or like, fuck it. Like, like, you know, imagine you're sitting at a table, you kind of like, push yourself away from the table and you get up and leave because you're like that table you were sitting at was your own way of being and showing up and, and, and being you in the world. And it's like, you're pushing away from the table and just being like, fuck it. I can't do this anymore. Sometimes it takes that. In fact, my experience has been and seeing clients experience, it often takes that. Like we sometimes we just, we can't quite wake up until someone's like shaking us. Wake up, sister, wake up, wake up. This thing you're doing over and over and over again, yeah, not working. And by the way, that's okay because that served you. That gave you a piece. That helped you see something. Embrace those pieces of you. Don't hate on her. Hold those pieces of you like you would hold a beautiful new baby. Let her know it's okay that all those things served. All of it. Nothing is by accident. Nothing is by chance. There's no such thing as luck. And the moment that you let go of all the controlling, the forcing, Passive aggressive, the 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 anger. By the way, all these pieces served. Doesn't mean you'll never be angry again. Sure as hell you will. And you know what? That'll serve too at some level. But the sooner that we get out of our own way, we surrender, like we truly let it go. We forgive. We care for ourselves. We love ourselves. We own our worthiness and we stand in it grounded. We understand what it means to be in our feminine. All things, by the way, I didn't know before. Not being attached to how long things take timelines, how it should look, open to possibility. Listen, I still remember the experience of when we were trying so desperately to become parents. We couldn't. Biologically, it was not happening. And we started to be open to, well, how else could that look? And so we went down different routes. Routes. open to possibility in darkness not knowing surrender like when I look back not seeing it at the time not being conscious but literally just like surrender show me a way I know there's a way for me to be a mother please show me the way seeing that these two beautiful boys that we adopted oh my god The depth of love and joy and, yes, the hard shit too. And how much that they've taught me and how knowing that these boys were designed for us. 
There's no, there is not an iota of doubt in me at this point as I speak into this podcast that this was the path. Not one. Not one do I go, well, I wish I didn't have all that soya when I was vegetarian for all those years because you know what? It probably really fucked with my estrogen. Like, no. I went there at the beginning. I wish we would have started trying earlier because you know, it probably was because we didn't wait till I was like 34 years old. No. It served. I could not be at the maturity level within myself to be able to really mother these challenging little dudes, man. These deep souls. I wasn't ready yet. And I know that in your life, you can look back on so many things and you see the connection. And it's easy, right, to look back in retrospect. It's easy To see the forest from the trees when we're out of like the depths of just being in it. And how in so many of those times that you simply got out of the way. Or you saw a new possibility. You don't even see a new possibility. You just went open. You just open. Show me. How does this need to happen? I'm going to let go. I'm going to trust And I know that every single piece of this is serving me. Every single piece. So my message for you today, sister, with so much love, get out of your fucking way. Get out of the way. Allow things. Listen, I know. I know it sucks to go, but wait a second. Uh Uh-uh. No, oh, no, this is a strong, badass woman. I'm going to fucking, like, I'm going to make shit. I'm going to hold on to it. Nobody can make me. And ba, 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 ba. I know, I know. Who do I know? I know. I see you. I hear you. I've been you. I know what that's like. And on the other side of that, I see a way of being in the world that is still, it's not, it's not devoid of pain or challenging times. But it's a way of being and creating because we are all creators, creators, creating that isn't about pushing. It's about life unfolding. It's about no a deep knowing. I'm going to say this very boldly. A knowing that life is not meant to be a push in this train. Is there a season for certain things? Sure. But listen, I have an experience now with running. I hadn't run for over 10 years. This feeling inside of me to like, I need to run. I need to run. I need to. I went, okay. Not even really enjoying running when I used to run before distances. Like, really not. Just like, uh, whatever, it seems like it's something I should do. Uh-huh. Along with CrossFit and everything else, was like a push, 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 push. So I went and got a pair of shoes. And then the next day I put them on. And then I ran for 30 minutes. And it was this flow and this experience of just being so present. And it wasn't about push. It was extraordinary what happened on that day and I've gone running two more times since the biggest opening was that first one I literally felt like I was being carried and I know some of the stuff is going to sound really fucking weird or maybe the other way of being is weird and we've made it so hard Look at some martial arts, you know, that just talks about use your opponent's energy, like you flow. I don't really know a lot about a lot of the martial arts, but Aikido, I know that you're kind of using your opponent's, like, energy. Like, you're using that, right? You're not pushing up against it. You're not shit. Like, it's, it's, there's a flow to it. There's a flow. Your life is one big flow. Maybe that's what we'll call this one. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. 
So you're more tit for today than sister? So there's two favorite more tips I love to do. One is just say, listen to this episode again. So you can choose that if you want. And then the second one is this, is to have these reminders, these affirmations, these groundings for you, these anchors. So here's what I want you to write on a post-it note to put on the wallpaper of, of your phone. Get out of my way. No, let's rephrase that, because that, that sounds a little aggressive. Get out of my way. I am choosing, let's put it in an in, in affirmation. I am choosing to get out of my own way. I am choosing to get out of my own way. I am choosing, I am choosing to get out of my own way. Yeah, that's it. So I currently have two spots open for one-on-one coaching. If this message resonates with you, if you were like, Karen, I want to know how to get to that. How do I get to the place where you are right now of just being in that place of flow? I want that. How do I stop trying to be so controlling with my husband or boyfriend or with my children or with my work? Like, I'm so fucking exhausted of it. I don't want to show up this way. I just don't know how to do it. How do I get past this crisis in my life? How do I trust? How do I surrender? And like mentioned earlier in the podcast, it often is that you may be at this bottom. You're like, okay, I'm open because you know what? I'm not figuring this out on my own, so I need help. If any of these speak into you, this is what one-on-one coaching is about. For women that are really looking for what are the skills, what are the tools, the support that you need to understand letting go, like really understand it, to understand trust, to understand surrender, to know how to navigate whatever big ass waves or small waves that you're currently surfing in your life and how to come out the other side of this stronger, bigger, grown through the experience you know, I, I can think of as a kid, my mom had a lot of things around those different sayings, and I was always like, oh, this is so dumb. And, and I remember this one, and I can't remember who says it, but it's bloom where you were planted. So the experience that you're currently in, that maybe you were contracting and, and in, you know, in pain, suffering about, could actually be the greatest source of transformation. But you know that you need help, and you cannot do it on your own. By the way, Nobody can do it on their own. We all need help. So if this is speaking to you, sister, here's what I want you to do. Email me, drkarenosburn at gmail.com, D-R-K-A-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com, drkarenosburn at gmail.com, and say, I would like to apply, because yes, it is by application. I get a lot of women apply. Some never make it to the first step or the second step. But if it's right and you're a fit, then we will begin. And life will begin to unfold for you in ways that you never thought possible. And it'll be amazing. And I would be honored to have that experience with you together. So email me and just simply say, Karen, I would like to apply. I will connect with you and let you know what the first step would be. Dr. Karen Osborne at gmail.com. So I will talk to the next episode, sister. A life of more really is one step away from letting it flow every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com newsletter.